once the site of a Phoenician port. Over the course of 12 years, Herod the Great built Caesarea into the grandest city in Palestine other than Jerusalem, with an aqueduct, hippodrome, and magnificent amphitheater that remains standing today. Herod began to rebuild the humble harbor on a grand scale in 22 BC, with intention to make it the primary harbor of his kingdom. He completed his work in 10 BC and celebrated with a grand games festival in the best of Roman tradition. Herod named the city Caesarea in honor of the emperor. Several other cities were given the same name, so this one was known as Caesarea Martima, meaning Caesarea by the sea, to distinguish it from the others. In 6 CE, Caesarea became the home of the Roman governors of Judea. A Jewish community was established in Herod's new city, but the pagan citizens refused them citizenship. One of the causes of the first Jewish revolt was a massacre of the Jews of Caesarea and the desecration of the synagogue by the Gentile citizens. The Roman general Vespasian, who was sent to crush the revolt, made Caesarea his headquarters until his legions declared him emperor there in 69 AD. In 132 AD, the rebellion of Bar Kochba brought on another massacre, and Caesarea witnessed the execution of many of the Jewish captives of the Second Jewish Revolt, including that of the noted Jewish scholar Rabbi Akiva. After the Second Revolt was suppressed, Jews were forbidden to live in Jerusalem, and many came to Caesarea. A large and spiritually prosperous community had developed at this time. When the Romans finally quelled the revolt and destroyed Jerusalem, Caesarea became the capital of Palestine, a status it maintained until the Roman Empire was Christianized by the Emperor Constantine in 325 CE, introducing Caesarea into its Byzantine era. Caesarea is an important site in Christian history. Christianity was established in Caesarea in the first century AD, and it is the setting for several events recorded in Acts. <music> Philip the Evangelist lived in Caesarea with his four daughters. From its port, St. Paul sailed for his native Tarsus when forced to flee from Jerusalem, and here he landed when returning from his second missionary journey. In Acts 24-25, Paul was imprisoned in Caesarea for two years. He demanded a trial by virtue due to his Roman citizenship and was duly sent to Rome where he was executed around 59 AD. Byzantine Caesarea was even larger than the Roman city. Covering some 1.6 square kilometers, it contained city walls, baths, churches, administrative buildings, shops, an amphitheater, and a new hippodrome. The harbor was repaired as well. In 502 AD, the emperor Anastasius was praised with the words, the city welcomes ships with confidence and she is filled with all necessities. Caesarea was captured by the Muslims in 640 AD, who crept in through the low-level aqueduct. The early Islamic city was much smaller, but the harbor was once again repaired and deepened, and the courtyard houses and streets were laid out on the edge of the harbor. In the 12th century, Baldwin I and his crusader army landed in Caesarea and slaughtered the entire Arab population. Among the treasures Baldwin troops discovered after this conquest was a green crystal vessel reputed to be the famous Holy Grail. It was taken to Italy where it is preserved today in the Cathedral of San Lorenzo in Genoa. Under the Crusaders' regime, Caesarea declined, although it was the seat of an archbishop and had a cathedral and other churches. Caesarea changed hands several times during the following century. Even though St. Louis of France had fortified its walls in 1252, most of the Crusader ruins we see today date from St. Louis's 13th century fortress.
When Muslim armies took the town during the 13th century, they did their best to pull down its defenses, and for the next 500 years, Caesarea's impressive structures slowly became covered by sand. In the 18th century, Ahmed al-Jazar Pasha, the Ottoman governor of the province, sent his workmen to Caesarea to reclaim its Carrara marble and columns of decorative stone for use in the reconstruction and beautification of his provincial capital at Acre. The vast, beautiful city that Herod had created seemed virtually lost. An Arab village survived here, but it was abandoned by its inhabitants during the 1948 war. Caesarea's modern history really begins in 1940, when nearby Kibbutz Sedat Yam was founded. Its members discovered the unexpected richness of Caesarea's archaeological remains, and a full campaign of restoration followed. Today, Caesarea is an archaeological park and a popular tourist destination. Christian pilgrims come here especially to see the site of St. Peter's House and experience the setting of Christianity's birthplace. The remains of Caesarea are spread along a three-kilometer stretch of Mediterranean beach. There are two separate entrances to the park. You'll arrive at either the Roman Theater or the Crusader City, which are in fact right next to each other, though the entrance gates are half a kilometer apart. Admission to Caesarea National Park covers both the Crusader City and the theater. You can enter the city for free after the 5 p.m. closing time to visit restaurants that have sprung up inside the park or stroll the ruins, but special exhibits are closed at night. To get a better idea of the scope of the place, you can get a map showing the details of the succession of cities that have risen at this site, both on land and in the water. The crowning glory of the visit to the site is an impressive travel through time display, which highlights the tour and transforms the visit into a historical trek through time. The 10 minute multimedia clip presents the city throughout the ages. An innovative computer simulation visually displays how the city passed from one hand to another and how the city appeared in the various ages. is a hall with four screens that welcomes visitors with 12 figures from various historical periods of the city. A personal meeting with King Herod, with Louis IX, Rabbi Akiva, Baron Rothschild, Hannah Senesh, and others can be scheduled to hear their stories and to become introduced to the events of that era. Visitors then continue to the Tower of Time display located in the recreated fortress. The view from the top of the tower is good enough reason to climb to the top. In both Tower of Time halls, visitors can view a sophisticated computer system that allows them to view on a giant screen the ancient structures of the city that were excavated. can take a virtual tour of the city, enter buildings and visit the streets, even participate in various activities such as horse racing in the Hippodrome, performances in the theater, roaming around the market booths, and receiving ships arriving at the port, all of which tangibly and powerfully indicate Caesarea's importance throughout the ages. Call ahead for information, presentation schedules, and to reserve a place.
Outside Caesarea, the excellent Caesarea Museum of Antiquities houses many of the artifacts found by kibbutz members as they plowed the fields in the 1940s. The small museum has arguably the best collection of late Roman sculpture in Israel. Impressive holdings of rare Roman and Byzantine gemstones and a large variety of coins minted in Caesarea over the ages, as well as oil lamps, urns excavated from the seafloor, and fragments of jewelry. Ancient remains, Caesarea is a town devoted to tourists and to luxurious living. Some of Israel's finest homes are located here, and it is also the home of Israel's only 18-hole golf course, designed by the renowned Robert Trent Jones, a luxury hotel, a vacation village, miles of sandy beaches, and a series of attractive restaurants, galleries, and boutiques huddled around the Mediterranean cove. And, of course, visitors marvel at its extraordinary archaeological attractions, not the least of which is the Roman Theater, where concerts, entertainment extravaganzas, and the annual International Opera Festival are held. 